Okay. Here I am. It says I'm live. So, if someone shows up, please let me know if you can hear me. This all feels very janky right now. It's been so long since I've done, done one of these. So I was like fighting with my light two seconds ago so you can actually see my face because I'm in a cave. <sighs> so yeah. So if you can see my face but can't hear me or hear me but not see my face, let me know. But I think it's telling me everything's working. So I'm hoping everything's working. Um, but I am in some kind of streaming software that also lets me capture the video because I'll throw this up on YouTube later. So it is kind of, it's strange to go through this software because I'm just, I'm not seeing Facebook. I'm seeing this software. So throw me some comments if you can, and hopefully they will come up here. If someone's there yet. Group members can use this link to grant permission to see their name and profile. Okay. Okay. Let me take a second and open up Facebook. And hopefully I won't give you feedback or anything. Because I just randomly found a link that if you guys are watching and you want me to see your username or something in the comments, you can use that link. Uh, but I have no experience with it. Don't do it if you don't want to maybe play. Okay, I see I'm, I'm there and I see two of you watching. One, just one. All right, we lost one. That's okay. See you on my end. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so here's that link to allow me to see your name. I don't want to make you use links and stuff, but there it is. Um, information is power, right? Okay, so I'm still... Ah, okay, I'm seeing it up here now. So if you have a question, I know there's only one of you right now, but if you have any questions, let me know. I'm here. That's what I'm here for. So um, shoot. <sighs> it's been so long since I've done this. Normally I would come up with something prepared on my end but I just I yeah I'm still getting back into the swing of things school just started I live in Ontario Canada and we shut our schools more than anywhere else in North America <laughs> yay <laughs> so it's been it's been a tough year to do this kind of thing because if my daughter was home it would literally be in your face crazy time so I'm really excited that school is back on and I get to do this again. Um, fun fact, I just found out yesterday, our Facebook group has 36,000 posts a month. So 36,000 posts a month, there's no way that I could answer questions 101. That's not even counting all the emails and DMs I get, which are just at times really overwhelming. So I feel like this is my best way to answer your questions directly if you have them for me. It's just a thousand times easier and a thousand times faster than typing out answers and I can show you things and and so on so really excited for school to be back so I can do this kind of thing again yeah that's that's the spiel 36,000 members I will be looking for more um, admins in the future I did not know it was that much and our admins are doing an incredible job I know they're they're so dedicated to this group. They spend so much time in this group trying to help everyone and moderating the lots of issues that pop up with, you know, almost 37,000 members now. So hats off to them, but I'm going to be looking to get them some help um, soon because, yeah, it's a lot. I didn't realize there's that many posts a month. That's crazy. But goes to show you there's lots of cloth up your mobs. The, the, hey, there's one thing, 37,000 members in the group and only 3,600 posts a month. So all those people, you know, that's a pretty good ratio when you think of people that are just living their lives in cloth diapering and people that are 
you know, having issues and asking questions. Anyway. <laughs> um, okay. So I'm not seeing any more comments. Let me just check Facebook and see what's up. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, groups. Lots of diapers. Where am I? There I am. <laughs> oh, let's turn that volume on. No one wants to hear that. Nope. So no comments yet. There's three of you. Only three of you. But that's okay. Um, ask me some stuff. Please. <laughs> you must have questions. Um, what can I talk about until some questions start rolling in? Oh, good morning. Hello. Maybe I can see your name on here. No. Good morning. I don't see your name, but good morning. <laughs> Thank you for commenting. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I don't know what to ramble on about until you have questions. Let's see what I have in my cart. I did. A, I filmed a video on this sometime in the summer. I can't remember. I had like a day, and I filmed a video of I slimmed my cloth diaper stash down. I still haven't gotten rid of them all yet, <laughs> but I slimmed it down so I could fit it all in this cart and have it all handy. Um, of course, since then I've gotten a lot more diapers in, so yeah, <sighs> maybe another cart. <laughs> I'm not sure. But anyways, um, I have this handy and I do see a question. What kind of cloth diapers do you recommend for someone to get who is completely new to it? Several different styles, inserts, yes. A thousand percent. I just wrote an article on the website about this two weeks ago. Um, you really, really, really need to think about your cloth diaper stash as a wardrobe and not a uniform. So different types of cloth diapers, different inserts, you know, variety is going to help you get through different situations because a lot of people go in and they, they're like, oh, I found really cute, cheap pocket diapers. I'm going to buy a gazillion of them. That's great, but what about nighttime? What about car trips? What about, what about, right? Really having a variety is gonna help get you through everything. And it's also going to, you know, 90% of the time you're buying diapers before you've even like seen a diaper or tr let alone tried a diaper. So you're kind of going off the internet and you know, recommendations are cool and all, even like recommendations for me are nice and whatever, but you don't know until you actually try what you are going to love using and appreciate, right? So, at the start, I, I really recommend that you don't fill out your whole stash. So, if you need to know how many approximately you think you need, um, I have a calculator for that on the website as well. I'll drop links after this is done. Um, so, figure out about how many you think you're going to need based on your washing schedule prediction, which can also change. But, kind of come up with a minimum number. Take that minimum number and buy a bunch of different things. And that's going to help you really try things. It's going to give you stuff for different situations so that, you know, when they hit 8, 9 months, 12, 18 months, those kind of two big jumps, you're going to have other things to play with. You're not going to be put in a box where this is not working, cloth diapers suck, I hate it, blah, blah, blah. Get yourself a wardrobe, not a uniform. Um, as for what kind of diapers I recommend, it's so hard. It's based on... There's so many things that can change what I would recommend. Your budget, who's changing the cloth diapers? Do you have grandma changing cloth diapers? Do you have, you know, spouse changing cloth diapers and they're not on board, they really want to use disposables? Then you're going to need something that's really quick and easy at the change table. Are you on board, you're ready to learn this thing, but you want something that's like quick and easy to wash and very inexpensive? Then you're going to go pre-folds, um, flats, that type of route. Like, it's really what I would recommend would really change based on your circumstances and your preferences and, and whatnot. Are you going to only be able to wash every four, five days? Some people do it. I don't recommend five days, but you know, life's life's life. So if you can only wash for a long amount of time, you really want something that's easier to wash as well, like a prefold or a flat or something like that. So there's a lot of, a lot of different 
things that come into play. If you give me a little bit more information about, you know, what your needs are, then I can kind of come up with a recommendation that way. Um, in that post that I mentioned, which I will put a link in after this is done, um, I kind of go over, you know, if this is your concern, then you might want to look at these diapers. And if this is your concern, you might want to look at these diapers. So that article has that all in there. But to like, spew out a bunch of recommendations, it would be a lot of diapers and we'd be here for three <laughs> hours. <laughs> so check out that article or drop me another comment with um, kind of what your needs are. Um, it's been overwhelming to decide. Yes, yes. It's I can remember that. I can remember being on the computer and just like, I don't know what do I need an insert with this type of diaper and do I only use an insert? It's like so confusing at first, especially with all the lingo that's around it. Like AI2, what the f is that, right? Like it's insane. It's I get it. You're not alone. Everybody gets there or goes through that where it's very confusing. It's very hard to decide. I get that. Um, hi, I followed all the instructions on the guide for ammonia smell in some secondhand diapers I bought, but the smell is still there. Do I have, do I have, sorry, do I have to do any other deep clean strip cycle or are they no good? Ammonia is 90% of the time going to be a detergent issue, so too much detergent. So you, you did a swoosh test, you found detergent in there, you rinsed it out, or was there no detergent? Like I need a little bit more, more detail to help. Um, did you sanitize them when you got them? Um, have you done a strip on them? What have you done so far and and what's going on? Because ammonia is also possibly not a wash issue. So, you know, things like diet, things like medication, things like dehydration at night, all these things can cause ammonia that are just biological. Um, there's There can be a lot of stuff. It can be a pH issue, although that's we're getting a little advanced there and it's probably not that. Um, let me know a little bit more information about like if you've done a swoosh test, was there detergent? Did you rinse it out? Um, what did you do when you first got the diapers? Did you sanitize? Have you done a strip yet? Let me know a bit more. Um, hubby and I are both on board with it so it's mainly him and I. Okay. I believe which is easier is best and easiest to wash. So those are usually two separate things. <laughs> <laughs> so what's easier at the change table is going to be something that you, you just you put on baby and you take off baby and you put in the thing just like you would a disposable diaper right that's what I mean when I say easy at the change table so you're talking about pockets that are already stuffed uh, as far as easy goes stuffing pockets usually gets to be a pain in the butt pretty quickly unless you're a weirdo like me and you like stuffing diapers um, or an all-in-one, so something like this where, you know, the most you have to do is flip the flap over, right? So you flip the flap over, you take off the old diaper, throw it in your bin, you put this on, it's just like a disposable. Um, easiest to clean are not all-in-ones and that type of thing because all-in-ones and these kind of easy-to-do diapers, you have to, you have to wash, I mean, you have to wash all your diapers really well. Let me just say that at the beginning. But... These ones are a bunch of different layers sewn in together, all in one piece, covered half with a waterproof fabric. Come, sorry, my dog. Um, this is a lot easier to get clean than, you know, a pre-fold where it's just the fabric and it's, you know, single layer on, or two layers on the side and whatever, or a flat that's a single layer of fabric completely. Those are easier to get clean than these. So the margin for error in your wash routine is much higher on these ones than they are on these ones. So easier to clean and easier at the change table are pretty much opposite. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I get, I have a whole huge video on the differences between all the different diaper types and what they might be good for. I also talk about that in that other article. Um, so yeah, <laughs> really think about you know, where you need things to be easy and your budget and that type of thing. If you're on board and you're you're both ready to do this thing, something like this is going to be the easiest thing because the learning curve on these are higher at the beginning. So you do have to learn how to put them on baby, 
you know, cover them with a diaper cover, put pins or a snappy if you want. You have to learn that, but once you learn that, it's these are much simpler than these are. So, there's that. Um, we want to stop cl we want to start cloth diapering once we have established a new routine with our new baby smart. Due in October, she fits in regular sizes, not getting newborn diapers. Okay, so yeah, that's newborn diapers most people don't do no newborn diapers, um, especially with their first in cloth, so that's fine. Almost all of the other diapers that you're going to find are one size, um, like all-in-ones, pockets, all-in-twos, those are all going to be one size, you'll have no problem there. Um, Pre-folds, flat and, flats and whatever, flats always come in one size, pre-folds come in different sizes, but you just avoid the, like, the tiny, tiny ones like this size. Um, although if you do get this size, these make excellent boosters later on. Um, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Sanitized and stripped diapers when bought. Perfect. Swoosh just showed a little detergent buildup, so I put them through a few rinse cycles, then washed them again with soft water detergent recipe. Okay. Still have not used them on my own babies because not sure why they smell. Oh, they still smell and you haven't used them. Weird. Okay. Um, that's really weird. That's weird. Okay. Um, what I can suggest, throw them, check for detergent again, just to make sure. I mean, it takes, it's nothing, right? Just to throw it in a bowl of water and see what's going on. Um, check it again. But then, either way, throw them in a wash with like the half to one cup of, of, I'm going to pronounce it wrong, beginner. <laughs> Welcome to my life. <laughs> um, throw some beginner in there as, um, I mean, if they're they're already clean, you don't have to do a full wash. Just do like a couple of, do one rinse with the beginner and then another rinse just to get it out. And that should correct it because you're going to be neutralizing any ammonia with the beginner because they're, they're pH opposites. Um, and no, it won't harm your washing machine, etc., etc. You're fine. Um, try that and see. That's what I would do. But it's really weird that you go through all of that and they would still smell. Like it's, yeah, that's odd. Still secondhand ammonia smell, it's odd. Which type of cloth diaper is least bulky but works well? Probably flats or stretchy flats. Um, so like these kind of guys. So it's literally just like a flat thing like this and you're folding it up and pinning it around baby um I'm not I I'm not schooled in flats a whole lot our other admins actually love flats and will use them religiously so they are the better ones to talk about that um but that, that's definitely going to give you the trim is fit now you need to wrap these around baby pin it and put it under a cloth diaper cover um so it can get a little complicated that way if you're looking for something like an all-in-one, all-in-two situation. That's a trimmer. Um, Grovia, do I have one? I might have one in my get rid of pile. I don't have it here. I haven't gotten rid of them. I should probably grab it out. I'm never going to get rid of diapers. Okay. Um, Grovia all-in-one. So the ones with the reverse flaps, those are the trimmers that I've personally found. Um, yeah, I don't really know anything else that's going to give you a super trim fit, especially when they're a bit older because yeah. you're going to have to add more absorbency. Um, trim for at night would be the Grovia one, but if you have a heavy wetter, um, that won't be, uh, a, a fantastic option if you have a very heavy wetter at night, but for regular wetting at night, those are the trimmest option and really good. Um, yeah, flats and covers or a Grovia one. Um, so so Grovia have the, the all-in-one diaper, which is the one that I was talking about for daytime that would be a little trimmer, or trimmer at night would be the O-N-E acronym ones um, for nighttime. Maybe someone else here has some recommendations as well. Okay, hi, I recently had mold in my diaper inserts, unfortunately. I soaked them in vinegar and am going to disinfect my whole stash using Clorox, perfect. 
um, as per instructions on Clorox website, perfect. It will definitely be safe to use on babe. Yep, it will be safe. I freaked out when did. Yeah, I know it's scary. Um, you don't. You didn't need to do the the vinegar. It. Um, did I say it? That word trips me up every single time. Um, you don't need to do that. It's not really. It's. It's not going to help you too much on fabric. Um, but yeah, use the Clorox. You're probably still going to have staining after that and you'll want to throw them in the sun to dry. Um, just as a little bit more of, you know, antibacterial stuff is if you believe that or not, but hey, why not? Um, cause it's also going to get rid of your staining and it's going to dry them out really well, which you want. You want to get them bone dry right now. So wash them in the Clorox, put them in the sun, dry them out until they're like not a drop of moisture out. If you live in a humid climate, probably sun them and then throw them in the dryer, get them super, super dry. And that should get rid of it and it's it's fine. Every, it, it happens a lot. <laughs> um, especially in the summer. Um, can you talk about FSTs and in what situation they're best used? Flower sack towels are, which are which is what FSTs are. Um, so they're literally kitchen towels that you can buy at Walmart or Target. I've heard the Walmart ones are softer. Um, they sell them in the kitchen aisle. You can get a pack of forget how many are in the pack five or seven for like a few bucks so super cheap um they work just like a, a flat diaper so it's going to be like a big cloth like this and you're going to fold it up and either lay it in the, the diaper cover or pin it on baby um they're 100 cotton so you get all the absorbency and goodness and ease to wash like that of cotton um, what situation they're best used? Um, it's a very versatile diaper, so you can do different folds or whatever to compensate for, you know, front wetters, back wetters. You can do jelly rolls if they still have runny poops, all that kind of stuff. So there's versatility, flexibility there. Um, easy to wash, very cheap. So that's the situation, really. If you're looking for something that gets you out of the pocket diaper, microfiber, rabbit hole that a lot of newbies get into. Um, it gets you out of that for fairly inexpensive, which is great. Um, you can build out a stash for really cheap. All you need is a few good diaper covers because, once again, for those who are new, where am I? So a diaper cover is different from a pocket cover in that it has, you know, there's no lining on the inside. So you put your, let's use a pre-fold because it's already folded. It's pre-folded. Um, you put your flat folded up or the flat is pinned onto baby. You put that over top of the diaper cover. And then when you go to change baby, you know, you take out the, the, the flat diaper flower sack towel. And as long as it's not soiled, you can just wipe it with a clean cloth and it's good to go because this is just plastic. So you're just wiping down plastic. Um, so it works out to be more inexpensive when you factor that in than pocket diapers, especially if you're using something like a flower sack towel. Now where a flower sack towel will fail, it's super, super duper bulky, right? So it's very, very bulky. It's still a cotton, so if you have a heavy wetter, you're going to still want some um, boosters in there. Um, notice I said boosters, not inserts. Um, like a bamboo or a hemp uh, booster if you have a super heavy wetter. But they're, they're really, I mean, you can't find a better economical option if you're willing to do the folding and the the putting it on more complicated um, oh we're going now okay <laughs> one second um okay flower sack towels thirsties natural all-in-ones are super trim for us that is another good one that's that's a really good recommendation those are very trim um good job um, and I'm not seeing names here or else I would be like, good job, name, but I don't see your names here. Oh, I do see one though. Somebody clicked the link. Kelsey, you have clicked the link. Thank you, Kelsey. I can see your name. Um, and you were the one who just asked about flower sack towels, so that's awesome. Does RLL, R does RLR help with getting detergent smell out of pre-loved cloth diapers and inserts? If you have detergent smell, make sure that you're checking you don't have detergent buildup. So grab a bowl, a big bowl of warm water, take a dry insert, put it in there, squish it around, swoosh it around, see if any detergent comes out. 
Usually if you're having a detergent smell, it's because too much detergent was used, so check that first. If you have detergent buildup, if it's super, super bad, sometimes I'll say use RLR because that's going to that's going to help if it's super bad. If it's not super bad, probably the quickest and easiest way is to just rinse. Just keep rinsing, 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 rinsing until the soap is out. And if detergent smell is your problem, that's 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 going to solve it. Um, you're talking about pre-love diapers though, so you had probably do a RLR anyway, just because you don't know, you don't know what, if they're using enough detergent that it smells like detergent and it has detergent buildup in it, they may be using a detergent that's not good for cloth diapers, in which case stripping would be really helpful because it's going, if it, if the detergent has softeners or anything like that, that's going to take it off, whereas just rinsing won't because it's like a, a greasy, oily, on their substance, right, coating the fibers. So if they're pre, pre-loved, I would, I would do the strip too. Um, but do check for detergent after you do your strip, um, just to see, to make sure all the detergent's out. So that'd be my recommendation there. So yeah, I would do an RLR. Um, someone said thank you, you are welcome. I'm not sure, but I just posted a question about my son's diaper area yeast infection with a, ooh, 101, 102.6 all day. Poor you. That's, that, oh. This morning he woke up with the same rash on his chin and a few, sounds like, hand, foot, and mouth disease, which has been going around. I've been hearing a lot of posts about it. Um, now I'm panicking, possible autoimmune. <laughs> Don't Google metal conditions. Obviously you're dying. <laughs> and you know that. Okay. Um, I had... I did add photos to the post. He has no fever now and doctor appointment 3.30 today. Any ideas? It could be hand, foot, and mouth. That would be my, my first go-to, especially if he's getting it around here. Um, so yeah, that would be my first thing, which is totally treatable. You don't have to worry about it. I think, th I've never gone through it myself, but I know a bunch of people who have. Um, you have to keep them like at home and quarant quarantined, which we're all used to now. <laughs> you have to keep them home for a while and not around other kids. Um, I'm not a doctor. I can't give medical advice at all, at all, at all. So I'm only saying this because you're going to a doctor today. Like, I feel okay saying it. It's probably that. Um, your doctor will tell you different. It's probably not. Although, again, I'm not a doctor. An autoimmune disease. I understand. <laughs> I understand how you can Google things and, and panic. But don't panic yet. Talk to your doctor. It's probably that which he'll give you medication and you'll be fine. Um, but it, that might be the yeast infection. Probably, st I, I have to talk to the doctor about that, actually. Um, about, um, hand, hand, hand and mouth, uh, <laughs> look up the proper name, hand, hand, foot, mouth disease, I think it's called. Um, I have to talk to a doctor about that because I don't know if you would need to bleach, but my instinct would be to bleach just the same as yeast anyway. Your call, talk to your doctor first. Your doctor, ask your doctor. Say, hey, I'm also using cloth diapers for a yeast infection. I've been told to bleach my diapers to kill any yeast spores or whatever. Would I also have to do this for hand mouth if that's it? That's what I would do. Uh, love flower sack towels, but do need to be replaced after lots of use in 15 months. Yeah, that's, that's, that's fair because you're also washing them a lot more intensely than you would if they were using hand towels, right? And they're, they're just cheap hand towels. Uh, I think you're most welcome, Kelsey. Um, what temperature would you use for the pre-rinse cycle? Dealer's choice. It's really the only, this is where things get confusing and I, I differ from the other groups. The only, and this, this is how it all started when we began building wash routines, the only reason of the first pre-rinse is to get the majority of the urine and um, any remaining feces off the diaper so that the detergent can come in and work on the deeper insides of the diaper, right? Doesn't matter if you're using hot, cold, medium, whatever, to just rinse. It really, the only reason we say hot, or I say hot water in the main wash is because most detergents really rely on hot water if you're using a cold water, if you're using cold water to wash your diapers, buy a cold water detergent, by the way. Um, so that's, that's the main reason hot water also cleans better, but that's debatable. <laughs> um, so that's why I say hot in the, the main wash, but rinse, 
Really, it's only to rinse away some of the extra stuff, so you can use whatever you like. This is, if we want to go back to when I began cloth diapering, this this was, it was new then to do a pre-rinse, and then people kind of took it way farther than they needed to, and now people are doing like 17 washes with detergent in their diapers because they need more than one wash with detergent and blah. No, no you don't, you don't, no, no. It's just to get some of the stuff off. <sighs> Don't get me started. <laughs> um, I'm a medical assistant. I know girl. So R, R does stripping. Making sure I understand correctly. Sorry. Um, new to this and I just ordered it for the first time. Do I need to wash them with my detergent afterwards after stripping? No, you don't need to... Um, you don't need to use detergent after stripping, especially if detergent buildup is one of your worries. So I'm assuming that, okay, so these are pre-loved. I'm assuming that you've already done a sanitize. Do the sanitize first. A lot of people say the opposite, but it, it makes no sense because the strip will take out the, the bleach. So do the, the bleach first. Get them sanitized because a, a fabric strip... So it's literally stripping things off the surface of the fabric. It will not kill bacteria. Bleach will kill bacteria, but it will not strip things away from the surface, right? The dead bacteria will likely still be there, and, except for what's washed away with the water. So do a sanitized cycle first if you haven't. I don't know. Um, do that. Strip them. Check for um, detergent buildup and go from there. If you still have detergent buildup after that, really all you need to do is keep rinsing and you're fine. Choosing boosters has been a bit overwhelming for me. I have a good stash of microfiber hemp and bamboo inserts. Unsure how to layer them or why microfiber seems to get a little hate in other groups. Yeah, microfiber, yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot. Okay. Okay. Um, let me get out a sheet. In the group files... Or on the website, if you, um, what would you search on the, the website? How to stuff a pocket diaper. If you search for that on the website, there's a whole article. Uh, but in the, oh, wrong one, sorry. One second. I have too many cheat sheets. Too many. Uh-oh, is it here? Uh-oh. -uh. Oh, it is here. Okay. Yay. Okay. So in the group, the group, the Facebook group files, um, I am posting this on YouTube later. If somebody is watching this on YouTube after like a year from now or something, I will have a link in the description, um, so that people can get this. So is it going to show up backwards? It's going to show up backwards. But, um, on this sheet, the right way, <laughs> um, it has microfiber, bamboo, charcoal, cotton, bamboo, hemp, all listed out in order of absorbency. So microfiber is really prone, prone to, um, it absorbs really, really fast, but it absorbs less and it's prone to compression leaks. So that's on the top. So that's the main reason that a lot of people don't like microfiber is because sure it's quick absorbing, but it's also irritating to skin. So you can't use it if it's not wrapped in something. Um, it doesn't hold very much. And as soon as you squeeze it, it's microfiber is like a sponge, right? bear with me. <laughs> so microfiber is tiny, tiny fibers that are like smaller than human hair, all jammed up in like this. So this is the way that microfiber is sewn together, right? Like they're all up and down. The reason it absorbs so quickly is because it's like hair is like this, right? So the water comes and it goes shoop right into the, the indents. So this is versus like a cotton or a hemp or something that's weaved. So the the liquid has to sit on top for a little bit longer, but once it's in there, it's more locked in, right? Because you have to squeeze cotton harder than you have to squeeze like a sponge, which is like what microfiber is. It absorbs really quickly, but as soon as you squeeze it and those fibers come together, the water shoots out. So microfiber is prone to compression leaks. It doesn't absorb as much as the other types of natural fabrics. That's why a lot of people hate it. There's also the whole issue if you're doing, in this for the environment, um, not everybody is, I totally understand that, that's fine. But if you are doing this for the environment, microfiber, um, the little fibers will break off in the wash and go in the water system and then, you know, it goes into fish and, and 
sea life and all that and then you go to the market and buy some fish and you're eating plastic. So that's the other downside to microfiber. Um, but apart from that, so on this sheet you have microfiber, um, bamboo charcoal is usually a fleece wrapped around a microfiber insert. So they call it bamboo, but there's usually no bamboo in it. So bamboo, um, charcoal, um, cotton, bamboo, and hemp. So you want to layer them in this order because they are from fastest absorbing to least fastest absorbing and least absorbent to like the, they'll absorb less to they'll absorb more. So layer them just like you see on that sheet. So microfiber on top of hemp, microfiber on top of bamboo, cotton on top of hemp, and so on. I hope that answers your question. The cheat sheet is in the group files. Um, I hope that answers your question. If not, hit me back. Uh, would a 15 minute fast wash be sufficient for that first um, rinse wash cycle? Yeah, sure, or just a rinse and spin. It doesn't have to be, it really doesn't have to be a long complicated process. Something that's gonna put a lot of water in, swoosh it around and drain it out. That's all you need. Um, I've heard of hand and foot and mouth, so I will look it up. Thank you for bringing that up. How long will I have to wait to use the cloth diapers after I bleach them correctly? You can go two ways. You can keep using them, but you have to bleach them every time you use them um, to kill whatever's on them up till two weeks past the time when it's cleared up, just so that you know there's no more spores on there. Um, if a lot of people say that's too much for them, and I totally get it, that is a lot of work and a lot of you know, bleach. So um, if you don't want to do that, just do just disposables until two weeks past and then you just have to bleach them once and then they're ready to go. It's really just bleaching them once after they wear them when it's still a possibility of being contagious. Um, it doesn't matter what kind of bleach I use, brand, do you have a recommendation? Um, Clorox, do you have to get into the, the whole splash list whatever as long as it says that it kills 99% of bacteria on the bottle you're good Clorox is usually the better one um, and it's sold more so it's it's fresher on the shelf um, could you please share your wash routine nope meaning what are the steps for soiled diapers rinse let draw okay um, so I won't share my personal wash routine as in how much detergent I use and how many diapers I wash etc because every wash routine is different. If someone has a two cubic foot washing machine that's this big and they wash 10 diapers a week and they use Tide, their wash routine is going to be completely different than this person who has a six cubic foot washer that washes three diapers and <laughs> every every other day and they use Gain. Like, there's a lot of factors that go into your wash routine that not a lot of people think about, but they all they all matter a lot. So that's why we don't share your wash routines because they're not very helpful. You know, hard water and soft water, those two things also dramatically affect your wash routine. So two people could have the same washing machine, wash the same type of diapers, the same amount of diapers, but one has soft water, one has hard water, they're gonna use vastly different amounts of detergent. For the actual physical like settings and stuff. Um, so first of all, you're gonna take the diaper off your baby. You're going to dump any swat solids into the toilet. Plop. Hopefully they're ploppable. I wish ploppable poops on you. Um, most of the time they're not. <laughs> they're a runny hot mess, but get off what you can. Um, and then you're either going to dunk and swoosh, or if you're lucky enough to have a sprayer, or you can scrape it, or you can use a liner, lots of things. Get as much poop off as you can if your baby is on formula or food of any kind. If your baby is exclusively breastfed, it's actually water soluble. You could just throw the whole thing in the wash like that with the poop on it. Personal preference, of course, but it is possible to just throw the EBF poops, exclusively breastfed poops, right into the washing machine. But assuming that your baby is eating formula or some food, you want to try and get as much of the poop off as you possibly can. If you have a pocket diaper, you're taking out the pocket, unless it's a pocket diaper with two openings, so opening at the back and an opening at the front, that will actually agitate out in the wash and you don't have to do the unstuffing. But most pocket diapers you will have to unstuff, throw it in your wash pail, hanging bag, whatever it is that you decide. Um, 
and wait for wash day. Wash day comes, you throw it all in the washing machine. Um, after you've calculated your wash routine and you know how many can go in your washer for that particular cycle. And then if you have hard water, you are going to do a rinse and spin and then a hot and heavy wash with your recommended amount of detergent that you figure out using the measure method, <laughs> which I can drop links for below um, when this is over. Um, so you're going to put your detergent in, wash it, throw it in the dryer. If you have soft water, a little bit more uh, work on your end. You have to do the rinse and spin, do the hot and heavy wash with your amount of detergent, and then you also want to do an additional rinse to make sure all of that detergent gets out of there, and then you, you're drying them. And that's the gist of it. It's It sounds like a lot, especially when you're trying to come up with your measure, measure method routine because you're looking at the size of your washer, you're looking at what your detergent bottle says, you're looking at your water hardness, you have to do that test. You only have to do it once though, unless you move. Um, so it's, it seems like a lot then, but once you do it a few times and down, it's simple. It's not going to take over your life, I promise. It's not that bad. Um, um, and as for how, when you have enough to put in the washing machine, that's going to depend on your washing machine. So washing machines are... They, they all are marketed as, you know, super high capacity, awesome washing machine, but they're all different sizes. And because they're different sizes, they're going to use different amounts of water. So you do have to look at how big your washing machine is to see how much you can actually fit. And we always say go by weight, not volume, because, you know, different diapers weigh different amounts and they're going to hold different amounts. So you want to make sure that you're getting enough water to clean inside that diaper and clean the amount of waste that's in there. I'm probably overthinking this, but after rinsing and spraying poopy diapers, should I squeeze out water before throwing it in the wet bag or throw it in sopping wet? Um, I just threw them in sopping wet. I, there's the whole mess mess issue because uh, wet bags are water resistant. They're not waterproof. So if you have a whole lot of uh, sopping wet diapers in there, your wet bag will possibly start to leach out water. So there's that whole issue that some people might want to squeeze, but I used to just throw everything in there. The, when you use a, a measure method um, routine, all the weights are wet weights, so I expect it to be either soaked in urine or soaked in water for rinsing. So yeah, don't make work if you don't want to or if you're not worried about the mess that might be in your bin after. Um, I have a secondhand washer and honestly until I joined this group I had no clue about laundry. None of us did! I didn't know this stuff! God no, I would be like, let's fill the detergent, the, the washing machine with detergent because more is better. Everyone's like that. Nobody teaches this stuff. I, nobody teaches this stuff, don't worry. They haven't taught it since washing machines were like buckets of water with scrape boards. Like it's crazy that nobody teaches this stuff or knows. And it, it'd be one thing if all the washing machines were standardized, if all the detergent was standardized, but everything is all over the place. It's it's no wonder they just set people up to fail. That's my rant. Um, sorry, <laughs> I have a secondhand washer, and honestly, until I joined this group, I had no clue about laundry. So I've done a few clean cycles for my washer. I'm still getting suds in my water. It's on the clean cycle, but I'm only using bleach and vinegar. Beginner, that's my word. I can't get out. Um, so I'm guessing that the suds is detergent buildup in the washer. Yep. Very minimal suds now, but suds nonetheless. Should I keep doing washer cleaning cycles until there's absolutely no suds? Ugh. That's tough. If you it, if it were just doing your regular laundry, I'd say no. Do you, Are you washing your diapers right now? Because if you're not, I would... If, you, if you're still pregnant, I don't know your situation. So if you're still pregnant and you're not washing diapers for a little while, I would just do your laundry, like, make sure you're not using a lot of detergent in your your laundry as well um I, and just keep doing vegener rinses um in your regular laundry to see if that helps but if you are cloth diapering right now and you need to use your washer for cloth diapers i would try and get the suds out just because they're gonna mess with stuff so bad especially if you have soft water that's tough that's very tough keep using keep using the vegener until it's out sorry that stinks thank you so much for answering so many of my questions no worries <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad it was helpful. That's fantastic. What time are we at? Holy crap. That was 45 minutes. That was the fastest 45 minutes ever. My God. 
Um, yeah, and whew, okay, I'll take a break now. <laughs> Thank you for the questions. I'm always worried that I'm always worried that I'm not gonna have questions or whatever. But you guys always you guys always come and give me good good questions. These are really good questions. Um, yeah, are there any more questions or can I relax my jaws? I was only planning on going until about 11, so we're about 15 minutes off. I do have another one of these planned on YouTube next Friday, but because it's YouTube, I'm going to, although I put these on YouTube too, but because it's YouTube live, I, I'm going to try and do like a little presentation um, at the beginning and I'm going to do a little presentation about inserts and how to, so someone was asking about this today. Rather than, you know, just giving you the cheat sheet, I'm going to literally run you through, like, okay, what is hemp? How does it, you know, I'm going to run you through everything, how to layer everything, how to use different inserts um, for different situations. So, you know, when you're in the car at nighttime, that type of thing. Really run through the whole insert thing, and then I'll do a question and answer after. And that's on YouTube next Friday at 10. Fridays are really easier for me. Um, but if the time is not good for most people, let me know in the comments and we can always play with that too. Um, but I tend to, <laughs> I tend to psych myself up for these. I don't know why, I'm just nervous and so if I could do them in the morning, that usually helps relax me for the rest of the day. <laughs> I know it's done. Yeah. I'm fine once I get in here and I start talking to you, but like beforehand I'm like, ooh. So, yeah. <sighs> but yeah, very good questions. Very, very good questions. Um, what else is going on? I'm working on a lot of stuff. I am working on the cloth diaper cream experiment part two. I know, holy cow, I thought that was going to take me like a couple of months and I feel like it's been a year now. Like it's, I understand that's going to be my number one priority now that school is back on. That's happening. Um, I will have another really, really, really cool announcement in probably more around November, but I'm working away on something really cool right now. Um, so there will be that. Um, I'm continuing with the Facebook Lives. I am hoping, I'm, I'm not confirmed yet, but I think I might have a guest for one of them. So that will be super exciting. Um, yeah, I'm very excited for that one. Um, what else is going on? Working away on content. Um, yeah, it's just all, it's really exciting working with you guys, and yeah. Uh, no more questions yet? Okay, well if there's no more questions, then I will leave it there. Did someone, okay. Um, but yeah, super exciting talking to you guys again. Thanks you for great questions. I love it. I'm so excited to be doing this again and I'm so excited for, you know, really getting back into the group and and getting to see you guys and talk to you guys and all of the things that are coming down the, the line. I'm very excited. I'll stop saying the word excited. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you. so Thank you, Kelsey. I can still see. That's the one name I can see. Thank you for coming in. All your great questions. You asked some really great ones. Ah, just about to hang up but another one comes in. Okay. For diaper creams, my daughter is in class because she's so sensitive, allergic to disposables. She has had non-stop diaper rashes, and this is from Mandy, I can see your name too. Um, non-stop diaper rashes since 10, oh, 10 days old, and is 2.5 months now. Penitent is the only thing that has worked, so I have fleece liners between her and the diapers. How long after rash is cleared up would you continue to do that? That's a tough one. Um... That's a tough one. I mean, she's had rashes for so long now. That's 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 a lot, Mama. That's that's a lot. Um, keep doing it until it's completely clear, obviously. And then I would keep doing something, like every diaper change, regardless, just because she's so sensitive. Um, that could be like just a cloth safe diaper cream, so you don't have to use the floss, fleece liners anymore. Although. If she's moisture sensitive, you might not want to give up on those fleece liners too because they really help keep the area a little bit drier until you can get the diaper off. But I would keep using something, some kind of um, friendly diaper cream or even cornstarch. Um, as long as you're not poofing it in the air everywhere, cornstarch is perfectly safe. It will not lead to yeast infections. You can go to my website, search cornstarch, read the article where I have actual studies that show it does not cause uh, yeast rashes. 
Um, so you can do that. I found that really helpful um, on my daughter's bad rashes. She she had uh, food allergies and she would get really bad rashes. So I put diaper cream and then cornstarch over top and that would clear it up really quickly. I would keep using something, but it doesn't have to be the penitent because I know that's a nightmare for the fabrics, especially if you're using, you know, synthetic fabrics and that. Keep using something. Um, what would I recommend? What do I have here? I have one. That's good. And all the rest are in my Cloth Saver Experiment bin, which I do not have here. Um, but the ones I love that are, you can put these right on the cloth. I'm testing now, but you can put these right on the cloth. Um, a lot of people have not had a problem with it. Um, Earth Mama Organic Diaper Balm. There's also the Burt's, Burt's Bees Ointment, um, which is a little bit less expensive. Uh, don't get the diaper cream. Get the all-purpose ointment. Um, what's another good one? A lot of people just use coconut oil. Some people find it drying. Some people don't. So that's a debate you can have with yourself. Um, cornstarch. I would keep using something a little bit more natural just to have a barrier there, but you don't have to use the penitent every time. I feel like I took a really long time to answer that question. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what I would do. I'm sorry you're going through that. That, that sounds rough. Um, all right, and that seems to be the last one, and we are, there's only, there's nine minutes left. If someone else had a question, I'd be happy to take it. Um, but otherwise, oh, Maddie's Organic Diaper Rash Ointment is great. I've heard that one a few times. I gotta check that one out. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for the great question. Um, yeah. All right. I think that will be it for today. Um, come over to YouTube uh, next. I'll I'll put it in Facebook um, so you guys have the link. Come over to YouTube next week if you have more questions or you want to learn about um, layering inserts and inserts for different situations, etc. Um, and yeah, thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Thank you.